What's going on? Welcome back. If it's your first time here, welcome here. My name is Ryan Costanza, a.k.a. The Real Stanzi. Coming at you as um, a former athlete, somebody that's been working out, exercising, dieting for a long time. I have a bachelor's and a master's degree in exercise science. And this video, I wanted to talk about four tips to starting your quote unquote fitness journey or however you want to title it. So as someone that has a master's degree, I've seen all kinds of people. I've coached for about eight years. Um, I've coached at a division. I interned at a division one college. I've worked in the private sector primarily. I've worked with athletes of all kinds from you name the sport. I've worked with um, general population, adult population. So I have a little bit of experience in this area um, as well as nutrition. I'm not a, not an RD. I'm not going to give you uh, nutrition advice in the sense of I'll tell, I'm going to tell you what to eat. Um, but I know the laws of physics and uh, thermodynamics and how that plays a role. So let's just go ahead and kick it off. Um, number one, the, one of the most important things is clearly define your goals. Why are you getting into fitness? You have to know your why. Um, and that's because, you know, you need to, you need to ask yourself, what, what is my goal? Why do I want to get into fitness? Is it weight loss? Do you want to gain muscle? Do you want to just get stronger? Um, is there something you're training for? Um, like a, like a marathon? Are you bodybuilding? Um, is, are you training for a sport? Are you just trying to get healthier? Um, those are all things to consider. However, with your goal, you need to really, really be able to quantify it. Can you measure it? For example, um, do you want to get into squatting? And if so, is there a number you're trying to hit? Are you trying to squat one and a half times your body weight, two times your body weight? Are you trying to do a certain weight for a number of reps? I mean, there's a lot of ways that you can quantify um, your your health and your fitness. Um, it could, maybe you don't even want to lift weights. Maybe it's you want to get faster, um, you know, for for long distance. Maybe you want to be able to ride a bike. Um, maybe you want to get your mile time down. Whatever it is, you need to figure out what that is. And you also need to decide, do you want your goal to have an endpoint, Or is this something where you're trying to have a lifestyle change? Where you want to get into the habit of going to the gym, exercising, or just getting active uh, more consistently throughout the week to improve your health overall? I don't know what your age is. I, it, to me, it doesn't matter what your age is. Okay, Everybody needs to be getting in some sort of activity. And... Um, you need to, you know, make it make sense for you. Um, it's gotta be something that you like. It's gotta be something that, that makes sense, you know, just for the individual. Um, and with that being said about, do you want your goal to have an endpoint? Like as I, you know, with quantifying your goal, are you losing weight for a wedding, a vacation, um, for a bodybuilding meet, um, whatever, whatever it is, um, do you want an endpoint or do you want it to this to be a lifestyle change? As I already mentioned. And then you need to also kind of figure out, do you have weight room experience and how much weight room experience? Cause that's going to, um, that's going to tie into one of our other tips here later on in the video. Okay. But tip number one is you need to clearly define your goals, be able to quantify it. If you, I'm sure you've heard of smart goals, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and a time that a t timely manner. Okay. So with that being said, our next one is habits and processes. Um, so I don't know if you've ever heard of an author named James Clear. He's got a, a pretty good book out called Atomic Habits. You probably heard of it. Um, it's a great read. If you're getting into fitness, I think this is something that would really, really coincide well, um, with, with this journey that you're on. Um, because what he talks about is, you know, we can't, you can't be goal minded all the time. Okay. Because goals innately, um, have an endpoint, meaning you achieve a goal, then what? So 
if you're, if you're getting in fitness because you really want to change your life and you want to get healthier and you want to create a habit, then you got to take a, a look at a lot of stuff that you're doing in your daily life right now. Okay. I get it. People, adults work. Um, you have kids who play sports. Um, you have friends, you have social life that you, that you want to be able to enjoy, uh, vacations, what have you. Um, but with habits and exercise and health, you need to really, really think about, you know, what does your diet currently look like? Do you track your food um, and, ca- and or calories and, and or do you follow a diet? Um, and you also need to kind of realize uh, I've ne- I've, if you've never done those things, maybe it's something that you need to, to try out. Your diet's going to play a big role in, in your health. I don't know if you... If you knew that, since you're since you're new to this, apparently, but it, it's it's a pretty big deal. Um, and also, we need to need to figure out, you know, what what do my sleeping habits look like? Do you stay up late? Are you a night owl? Are you someone who consistently goes to bed at a decent time and gets eight plus hours of sleep uh, per night? And that's and that can you know, that's different for everyone. Like for me, um, you know, I, I'm a paramedic as well, so I work 24 hour shifts. There's some there's some days where my sleep is inconsistent. You know, if I'm at home sleeping, um, you know, I'll get seven, eight hours. But if I'm on shift, um, I may get one or two hours and it's maybe a total of four or five hours, but it's broken up into, you know, one to two hour sleeps. Um, and that can play a big role in your recovery, your overall energy. Um, so that's something you need to assess. And if, if you're serious about your fitness, then sleep is going to be probably one of the most important aspects because sleep is like the number one, the number one variable for your recovery. Number one. All right. And another thing you need to consider if you're an adult of legal age, um, how much alcohol do you consume on a weekly basis? That too will affect your recovery because alcohol is indeed a toxin. Okay. I'm not saying you can't have any alcohol, but I'm saying you need to really assess. And are you someone that indulges? Like, are you a weekend drinker, like a weekend binge drinker? Um, are you more of a rec or more of a uh, social drinker? You'll go out maybe two times a month and have maybe one or two drinks just, just to be with friends and to be with coworkers and, and family and whatnot. Um, also, you know, you assess, honestly, are you someone that partakes in recreational drugs? I'm not no judgment, but again, that is a factor. And no, marijuana does not aid in your fitness journey at all. Okay. It doesn't. Sorry. Sorry to burst anybody's bubble. I'm sure somebody will have a rebuttal to that. And I look forward to uh, reading your rebuttal and then uh, debunking it. So thanks. Um, Something else to consider in fitness, um, you know, with, with habits, um, it's an identity change. It's an identity change. And one of the really, one of the coolest stories, um, of, of, of an identity change, um, with fitness and, and what that looks like. Ethan, Ethan Suplee, this gentleman right here, Ethan Suplee. I don't know if you remember and remember the Titans. He was very obese. So this was Ethan Suplee in the movie. Remember the Titans. This is Ethan Suplee. Now he lost over 250 pounds. And one of the things he attributed to his success was the fact that he had to change his identity. He had to become a whole new person. And sometimes that even means like socially. Um, and the, it's the same thing with people who are drug addicts. And I've heard Lane Norton talk about this, but like people who are alcoholics um, or who are former drug addicts, part of that identity change is, is their social circle and who they associate with. Um, if this is something like you you really want to change, are you going to uh, associate with people who aren't supportive of what you're trying to do or think what you're doing is stupid or saying that you can't do it? Or are you going to surround yourself in a community of people that support you, encourage you and provide, provide you with advice um, and tips? And that's something else that I think a lot of people take for granted or don't really understand. Um, because it's kind of a, it's kind of a big deal changing your habits because you are literally changing who you are. Your habits are, are you, are what you consistently do and what you consistently are, right? So if you're a smoker, 
Um, like that's an identity. You have an identity as a smoker because that's what you habitually do. Um, so in a sense, you kind of have to think about who you want to be. Even if you don't want to be like the world's strongest man, you don't have to be the world's strongest man. But um, if you want to be someone that runs more, that lifts weights more, that's healthy, that can hang around their kids and do activities with their kids and do activities with their grandkids and not have to worry about, um, you know, the effects of having bad joints or being weak. Um, it's, studies have even shown that older folks who, who lift weights and consistently lift weights fall less and don't break their hips as much. Don't have, don't sustain injuries from falls. Um, keeps you out of a nursing home, you know, barring any, any kind of, um, disease process you may end up with that requires, um, you know, assisted living or, or nursing home habit changes. It's, it's uncomfortable. And in, and knowing that you have to change your habits and change who you are, that can be a deterrent for some people, but it's also kind of one of those things that you have to break through. And, you know, a lot of people think that with fitness and, and nutrition and dieting, that everything's linear and everything's just going to go like, it's like that. It's not, it's more like this. And sometimes it's even like this. If I could show you, um, so when I, I got married, um, last year, 2023, um, in September and I was in, I got engaged in 2022 in October and I knew that I needed the help to go on a diet. I wasn't overly overweight or anything like that. I was 192 pounds. Um, and I wanted to get down to 175. I wanted to feel good and look good for my wedding. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to take these 11 months, almost a year to, to get the weight off. And I'm going to do it by getting someone that knows what they're doing with nutrition, can take the leg out, the leg work out of it, take the thinking out and just help me create better habits, um, to, to get there. And, and so I ended up with, um, a guy named Greg Ferris over at Myobrain. Um, now I don't have any, um, financial affiliation with him. He's not like, I'm not getting kickbacks if you go sign up with him because of, because of me, I'm, I'm telling you about Myobrain because Myobrain was super helpful um, for me. I still use him to this day. Um, but he was super helpful in holding me accountable, which is going to be a part of one of our other tips today. Um, holding me accountable and giving me guidance, giving me, you know, keeping things real with me and, um, you know, just kind of being there every step of the way. And stuff like that's super, it's super helpful. But during that process, you kind of, you, you realize what, what's happening. You're changing who you are to get to where you want to be. And that's going to be, that's, that's, that's the name of the game. But the most important thing with fitness is, is just starting, right? And it's showing up. Don't wait till the next Monday. Don't wait till, you know, the next weekend. Start today. If you see this video, start today. Whatever, you know, I get, maybe it's late at night you're seeing this, but it don't, doesn't matter if you don't know what you're doing. You begin the habit now of working out and changing your life. The more you show up, the more you're compounding that habit. Something James Clear talks about. Habits are, the, it's the compound interest, right? The 1%, it's, it's compounding. Um, it, it, even if you decide that you're going to show up to the gym and you're just going to start out walking on the treadmill for 10 minutes a day. That gets you in the gym. That gets you in the habit of grabbing your keys, getting in your car, driving, parking in the in the parking lot, um, getting on the treadmill, and exercising. That's all. That's all it takes to start out. And next thing, you you go to the machine, do a machine workout. It doesn't have to be you know you don't have to be in the gym for two hours if you're starting out. Just get in the gym and get familiar with the gym. Get used to going to the gym. And inversely, you're going to have habits that you're going to have to break. What you need to do with those bad habits, like if you are someone that stays up late and you eat a lot of sweet treats, there's nothing wrong with sweet treats. We can talk about that in another video or even later in this video. There's nothing wrong with sweet treats, but it has to fit in to the overall context of what you're doing. Don't give up the things you love. Just use them and just have them in the appropriate context. Okay. But if you're someone that overindulges in, in some of those things, then that's a habit you got to break. And so one thing that you got to do is you got to be able to, you know, put up barriers. Like if you have those sweet treats, maybe put them, put them somewhere where it's hard to get to them. 
or, you know, put them in the back of the pantry to where you physically have to get, you have to move stuff out of the way to get to it. But each time you have, you know, an obstacle in the way that's telling you, I don't need this right now. I'm trying to lose weight. If you're someone that overindulges in alcohol, same thing, make it harder to drink. All right. Make it less appealing. I'm not saying cut it out completely. You don't have to cut it out completely. Studies also show that whenever you cut out things in your life that you enjoy, mostly foods, um, you end up just binging on them and overindulging on them. But it's learning how to appropriately portion those things and use them in the overall context. Bad habits and good habits, right? That's the pivotal point. And you, you know, making these, making the change for the better. All right. Number three. Number three, I'm calling it resources. Okay. Resources and resources and our fourth tip or whatever you want to call it, our fourth header, they kind of, they kind of play into each other. Third tip resources is kind of like your access to equipment. Now, gyms are great. And I've had the opportunity to work out in, um, collegiate gyms, division two collegiate gyms, uh, I was able to, I interned at Stanford, so I was able to actually work out at a division one gym that had all the bells and whistles, um, which was awesome. Um, can be a little overwhelming for people that don't know, you know, don't really know what they're doing. Doesn't always mean the best is always better. Sometimes starting out simple is the way to go. You know, simplicity has always been, you know, a key to success in, in fitness. Obviously, you know, being able to have access to equipment, whether you already have some, um, it's going to be a very con a confounding variable if you're, especially if you're wanting to strength train, which, you know, is going to be a, very helpful if you're someone that's trying to lose weight. So the pros and cons of, of joining a gym, for instance, like the, pr one of the biggest pros is the incentive. Like you have a financial monetary incentive. You are paying for a membership monthly that hard earned money that you're trying to put away for retirement, pay bills, buy groceries, you know, support your kids have a social life with your hobbies. Part of that is going to a gym membership. Okay. And that can be 50, $60 a month. That can be almost, you know, $700 a year that you're, you're investing in the gym in yourself. So go get in there. Also gyms typically have, you know, they have all the necessities that you need. They have squat racks, they have deadlift bars, um, bench presses, benches, dumbbells, kettlebells, trap bars, um, cardio equipment, stationary bikes, rogue bikes, pull up bars, you name it. Also, they gyms also now have like basketball courts, pickleball courts, they have saunas, they have pools, hot tubs. So if you're a swimmer and you're like, I need a gym to go swim at, like perfect, find a gym that has a pool and you, you can go work out and swim and knock out, you know, kill two birds with one stone. Don't break the bank by any means, but choose the gym that makes the most sense for you. All right. And convenience is going to play a factor too. And that's actually going to be in our cons section. So the cons, you know, gyms get busy. Um, there's that intimidation factor for people that are new to the gym and you walk in there and you see a bunch of giant, massive jacked dudes, and jacked women who are bikini competitors. Like it can be super intimidating, especially when they're, Someone's deadlifting 500 pounds right next to you. And you're like, I've, I've never deadlifted more than 180 pounds. What have you, that can be a deterrent. Um, also with that is like just knowledge of the equipment and how to, how to work out it in the first place. Like you just not knowing where to start. That can be, that can be a huge turnoff to people. Cause it's like, well, I don't know what I'm doing. So I don't think this, I don't think working out's for me, but you're, <laughs> We all start somewhere. You got to learn, right? Our bodies were made for physical exertion. All right. We were squatting, deadlifting. These are all natural movements. And, you know, being able to work out in the private, you know, I worked at a private sector gym, Kansas City Strength and Conditioning out in Shawnee. Um, big fan of that place still. But for me, like what made most sense for me now at this point in my life was actually building my own home gym. Um, and that has its own pros and cons. It was, it's the greatest investment I've, I've made. I'm, I can lift whenever I want. There's no, there's no, no crowds. You know, if my wife wants to go down there, just the two of us and it's, it's super easy. Um, I have all the essentials and it's, it's convenient. Um, but the cons, you know, it came at a cost. It costs a lot of money. Um, you know, I had to pay stuff off and for the, the equipment that I wanted and that I needed. So those are all things to consider, you know, you have options and which is the cool thing. And there's also, you know, like the YMCA, like they have all the stuff you need. So, I mean, that's another thing to look at. The last thing that we kind of have that ties into a, that ties into resources, um, in my opinion, is what I'm calling accountability. All right. 
it's hard to make these big changes and achieve the goals that we want to achieve without accountability. That's personal accountability or having someone who has similar goals as you. Someone, you know, like when you, like a friend, maybe you have a friend that wants to start lifting weights with you. That would be perfect because then you guys can get your schedules together and say, hey, let's go to the gym on these days. And you can start making it a pattern, making it a habit to go to the gym together. Um, or a family member, you know, like you're, if you're your husband and wife working out, or maybe your brother or your cousin, what have you, your mom or your dad, who, who it doesn't matter. Um, just, you know, somebody else that's wanting to focus on their physical health. Like you are, you guys don't even have to do the same workouts. You know, you can just go together and hold each other accountable. Like, Hey, do we need to go to the gym three to four times this week. It can make the process easier in the sense that it's, you're, you're adhering to, to these habit changes. Um, and these processes, you're creating processes for yourself. Um, and adherence is like the number one factor in long-term success with fitness, especially with nutrition. If you look at individual diets, like the keto diet, um, low carb diet, uh, carnivore diet, intermittent fasting, all of them, flexible dieting, if it fits your macros, every single one of those diets fail because of adherence. Like people just in the long term, people don't, don't stick to it. After a certain point, they do, they give up on it, um, and I think the the reason for that is they were so goal goal focused. Which is it's okay to have goals, but when you're goal focused and you're not habit focused, like you're not making those internal changes and changing who you are to lead the life you want to live to achieve those goals. Because dieting is like it's it's a long term it's a long term game, and as I mentioned, ultimately habit changes and long term success comes down to adherence. And that's why coming up with a plan is important in fitness. And people just think, oh, like personal trainers and um, strength coaches, they're just, they're just meatheads, man. It's like, no, like, there is a science to programming, having year-long plans, month-long, week-long, day-long plans. It, something that's going to really help with that is is record-keeping. Now, there's a, there's a ton of apps. I can't think of any off the top of my head of like, like a workout app. I know there's some out there. There's probably um, some free apps out there that you can download and build your own workouts or even get ideas to build a workout. Um, or you can just do it old school and do the old, the old pen and pen and pad, write down your, you know, write down what you're doing for the day and, and, and keep a log that way of the weight you did, how many sets and how many reps you did. And, and, and you'll notice that when you're able to keep this, these records and you can, you know, have a daily, a daily, a daily workout. And then even have like a weekly, like here's how many reps I did. Here's where I ended, you know, with all my numbers, my strength numbers at the end of the week. And then at the end of the month, and then you can compare month to month, week to week, you know, your strength gains and kind of see, you know, where you're at. But again, those are, those are the four tips that I have for if you're starting out in fitness, starting out on a fitness journey is clearly define your goals. All right. Know your why habits and processes. This is going to be the most important one to create long-term changes, resources, Gyms, personal trainers. That was another thing I didn't really touch on was personal trainers. But personal trainers can be, um, you know, another incentive. It could be something that can in incentivize you for because you're investing money, and somebody's taking um, all the leg workout for you, coming up with a plan for you. And I can make a whole other video on that on you know how to how to find good trainers. Again, joining a gym, creating a home gym, going to you know, finding a cheaper option, what have you, amenities, all that, all the resources, um, and then accountability. You got to have some sort of self accountability, and again, some good resources. Atomic Habits by James Clear. I'm not a, I'm not associated with him at all. I just think it's a really good book on on learning how to um, change your change your daily habits and and be able to make long term changes. Um, it's not just for fitness for for every for every aspect of life. Other things that you guys got to you got to you got to pay attention to is is setbacks. Setbacks are going to happen. Life happens, right? You have things that come up that prevents you from going to the gym. Um, that prevents you from being able to, um, you know, prepare food. Um, like if you're meal prepping or, or whatnot, or if you couldn't go to the grocery store, so you got, you have to eat out. You have to understand that, um, think life happens, setbacks happen, but what, all that matters is that you, you plan for that, you know, have kind of have that plan in the back of your head. If I can't work out today, um, when can I make it up? If you guys enjoyed this video, you know, go ahead and, and subscribe to my channel and be dropping, um, a lot of videos on, on health, fitness, and nutrition. Um, I'll do some sports and reactions as well. Um, I've already done two on Gary Brecca, um, and, and probably do more videos on, on the charlatans and the snake oil salesman. But, um, 
yeah, give me a like, give me a subscribe, comment, um, any questions you have, or if you're starting your fitness journey, if you've been, if you have any advice for anybody that's starting out, um, we'd, we'd love to hear it, but, uh, thanks for, thanks for checking. Thanks for checking out the video. Thanks for tagging along. My name is the real Stanzi and we will see you in the next one.